Okay, we got energy and momentum packet. This is going to be problem number four. So problem number four is the one with the two puzzle cars, um, or rather the puzzle car and the puzzle truck. So let's go ahead and read you the prompt of this problem, get started on it, and see where it goes from there. A puzzle car of mass M is moving to the right with a constant speed of three feet. Well, okay, well, here. Let's take away 3V. 5V with a puzzle truck of mass 3M, it's moving, or while a puzzle truck of 3M is moving straight towards it to the left with a constant speed of 2V. The two puzzle vehicles collide and stick together, most likely inelastic. Uh, record all answers in terms of M and V. Consider right to be positive. And so there is your problem. Let's see, number one, derive an expression for the velocity V prime of the combined car truck system after the collision. The key thing, right there, collision. What do we do? If you have a collision, you gotta use momentum. You have to use momentum. So look at the situation before they collide. Before they collide, who's moving? You got the M, the little, little car, you got the 3M big truck, and they're moving towards each other. So before the collision, you have the momentum of the car plus the momentum of the truck. After the collision, you still have the momentum of the car and the momentum of the truck. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's your moment momentum equation. Both things still exist, you know, they're still moving, we just gotta identify how. So before this, uh, this collision occurs, we have the momentum of the car. The momentum of the car, momentum is mv, we have m, momentum of the car, times 5v, and that's going to be our calculation for the momentum of the car, plus the momentum of the truck. The momentum of the truck is 3m, and it's 2v, but it's 2v in the other way, so we got to have that negative there, and that's going to just pop out, and all that does for our equation is, let me just rewrite it nicely, it's going to do this, and 3 times 2 is going to be 6, so... 6m v. So overall, on the left side of this equal sign here, we've got negative 1mv for our total momentum of both objects combined. Okay, that's just me writing all that through. Now after the collision, we have the momentum of the car, which is going to be m, traveling at some unknown v, v prime, v of the car prime, plus we have the momentum of the truck, which is going to be 3m, traveling at some unknown v of the truck prime. Okay, now what is that going to do for us? We, we know what happens. The two puzzle vehicles collide and stick together. So if they collide and stick together, that means that these two velocities are the exact same velocity because they're stuck together. So in that case, we can say 3mv plus 1mv, and that's going to give us a 4mv prime that's actually the one that we're looking for it's the same the same value for both of them after the collision and if we move down here we can see that if, if this is our equation then the masses actually cancel out because they're on both sides divide everything by m that goes away and that goes away and we want v prime so i'm going to divide by four so we have negative v over four is equal to v prime and that is the velocity of the combined car truck system after the collision all right, that's the first part. And number two says, after the collision, in which direction will the system be moving? Well, we just we kind of just found that out, right? Negative v over four is equal to v prime. Well, which way was positive, which way was negative? Five v was positive, negative two v was, well, that's to the left, so negative is to the left. So which way will it, will it be moving? To the left. Okay, justify. We, we just kind of did. Again, I'm not gonna write down the whole sentence for you. Um, I'm just I'm able to talk to you about it, and you can go back and listen to it again and again and again. I'm just not going to write it down. Uh, but to justify, you need full sentences, and we're going to say, all right, you know, to justify that after this collision, the system is moving to the right. Well, the total momentum of the system was to the left. The total momentum of the system right there was to the left. So in the beginning, our initial momentum was negative mv. After the collision, it's still negative mv. All right, and the velocity came out to be negative v over 4. And so a negative velocity in this system, in this diagram, represents to the left. So whatever you need to do to, to express that, you know, that's what you'll have to write in this space. And some of you might say, 
After the collision, in which direction will the system be moving to the left? Justify. It's moving to the left because it's moving to the left. Okay, that's not a justification. That's just restating what happened or what you see. Okay. So to justify, you don't just say the system is moving to the left because the system is moving to the left. Read what you're writing, please. Say that the momentum overall is still to the left. It's still pointing to the left. The velocity that we get is v over 4 and it's negative and negative represents to the left. That's why it's moving to the left, okay? So, gotta, gotta work on that right there. <clears throat> Number three, if the cars were to come to a complete stop upon colliding, describe how mass could be changed to allow for this. Well, in order for the cars to, com to come to a complete stop after colliding, that's zero momentum, right? And so what we know, what we know in this part, I'll definitely write down, what we know is that the momentum in the beginning is equal to the momentum in the end. And if the momentum in the end is equal to zero, then the momentum in the beginning would also have to be equal to zero due to the law of conservation of momentum if there was no outside forces here. And so for an order to for this thing to come to a complete stop after the collision, that means that before this collision even take pl took place, the total momentum here would have to be equal. And so for this car, if we have 6mv going to the left, and over here we have 5mv going to the right, well, how could we change the mass to allow for this total momentum of negative 1 to be 0? Okay, what would we have to do? We could either reduce the mass of the 3m, the truck, or we can increase the mass of the car, just, just slightly. Okay, in order for these two things to be exactly equal. And so, if the cars were to come to a complete stop upon colliding, describe how the mass could be changed to allow for this, you would say, well, you can, and this would be in complete sentences, but I'm just making a note, it would increase the mass of the car or decrease the mass of the there should be there should be a v there truck yeah so the momentums momenta the momenta is equal are equal there's two of them. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so in complete sentences, this isn't complete sentences, just, this is just me making a note for future reference. Um, yeah, you gotta increase the mass of the car, or decrease the mass of the truck in order for those two momentums, momenta, to be equal. And that's the only way that's gonna happen. Uh, you can change the velocity, but we're talking about changing mass. So there you go. Moving on. Next part. Number four. In terms of V, calculate what the velo with. In terms of V, calculate with what velocity the puzzle car would need in order for the system to come to a complete stop upon colliding. Oh, there you go. So, you know, that's the other part of this problem. Before we were talking about changing the mass, now we're talking about changing the velocity of the car. So, what we said before was that in order for this thing to come to a complete stop, the initial momentum would have to equal to the final momentum, all right? Um, the initial momentum is zero. And so, for this puzzle car, we have this puzzle car moving with some m v, and I'm going to put a little star here. That's what we need. Okay, we have v c is how we, we denote it there. Plus, we have six m v for the truck, and it's negative, and that has to equal zero in order for this to work out. So let's move that over. So we have m v. I'll use the appropriate one, the c there. That's what we want. Is equal to six m v. That's gone. That's gone. So velocity of the car would have to be 6v, six, 6 times the velocity of whatever v is in order for this thing to work out. Okay, done. Number five. On the graphs below, sketch the position versus time for the car and the truck before, during, and after the collision, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, with these, if it says sketch, we don't need to be exactly accurate. So I, I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, I need to put numbers here. I gotta, I gotta make values on this side and this side and everything's gotta be nice and neat. Um, no, just, just sketch it. 
Okay. Uh, first of all, we know that to the right is positive. And so this car, this puzzle car, is moving with a 5V velocity before this collision. So I'm going to just take this. I'm going to say, hey, we've got some 5V before the collision. There you go. Well, what happens after the collision? This puzzle car is moving to the left after the collision. It's moving to the left with a velocity of, let's see, drive an expression for the velocity V prime of the combined car truck system. So afterwards, it's, it's, it's negative V over 4. So it's actually very, very small. It's very, very decreased. This is position versus time graph. So we're talking about slope. So in the beginning, it was going in the positive slope direction. At after the collision, now it's going in the negative slope direction. Um, and then the question comes in with, you know, how what, do you put it up here? Do we put it down here? Well, let's think about this. As the small puzzle car hits the big truck, it's still probably moving in the positive direction, right? It's still probably moving in the positive direction. But as it hits we know that it has to get a velocity that is now negative. And so maybe we put that somewhere over here. And this negative velocity has very little slope. And this is just sketching. Um, but we know that it goes like this and maybe it becomes a little bit less. And maybe it's a little curved. Okay. So <clears throat> at some point we have this thing hitting and, and maybe it looks like that hopefully it looks like that it's going to be curved um, but we definitely know that before the collision we've got this positive velocity after the collision we have this negative velocity it's going the other way and during the collision we should have this you know planing off where the velocity changes slope because it's being there, there's an acceleration here all right all right and the next part Last part says the puzzle truck. Do the, okay, so we'll do the puzzle truck. The puzzle truck's coming in at a 2V velocity, and it's going out with a 1 fourth V velocity in the same direction. So really the slope here should be steeper, and the slope over here should now represent the exact same slope as what we had before because they were stuck together. And like we said in the last one, you know, hey, it's still going but now it's just going less. So there's going to be a slight slant there, a slight kind of curve. And so we'll do something like that to where, oh, we said it was, has to be the same slope. So let me, I just can't see this. There, something like that. So ignore that one. Um, yeah, ignore that one right there. We're looking at that one. It's at the same slope as before. So. For this one, it's coming in with a pretty, it's a decently sl steep slope. This one's going to be steeper because it's 5V. I'm just sketching, so it's all right. Um, it's going to curve up a little bit, and then it's going to remain straight when it's going off at 1 fourth V um, in that same negative direction. All right, that's the puzzle car collision problem number four.